All right, get ready, because we're diving headfirst into world history today. We're looking at this Unlocking Your Brain for Success in World History course, and honestly, my brain's already buzzing. There's just something about this brain-based learning approach, don't you think? So refreshing. 100%. We always hear, study hard, memorize this, but this is like, hey, work with that brain. Right. And getting how our brains learn, that neuroplasticity especially, can totally change the game. Okay, so for those of us who haven't thought about brain science in a while, what's neuroplasticity again, and why is it important for world history? Think of it like a muscle, your brain. Literally. The more you challenge it, the stronger those connections get. Yeah. It's not just memorizing names and dates, but building those pathways to really get history. Makes sense. So less cramming, more like building knowledge that lasts. Absolutely. And this course gets that, especially week one, those mental map exercises, mm. helping you visualize things, how events connect. Yeah, that hooked me too. History can feel so jumbled, right? Like random facts. Mm. Mental maps could bring some order. Totally. Giving your brain a framework for the big picture makes learning way more fun. And speaking of fun, weeks two and three, spaced repetition, mnemonics, that got me interested. Okay, I admit, at first I was like, flashback to high school. But they're not just those cheesy tricks anymore, right? No way. They're based on real brain science. Like, space repetition uses how our brains make memories stick over time. You revisit stuff, your brain's like, oh, this is important. So no more cramming the night before and forgetting everything. It's about spacing it out so it stays there. Exactly. Then there's mnemonics making things more memorable, like little hooks for your brain. Like a funny image for a historical figure or a rhyme for a date. Might sound silly, but if it works with our brains, I'm in. That's what's great. It's about your learning style, using what feels right for you. And speaking of finding your rhythm, week four is about building a study routine that works with you, not against. That's got to be more than just setting a timer. Definitely. This is where knowing how habits form comes in. The habit loop, they call it. Q. Routine reward. You can hack that to make study habits that last. Okay, break down this habit loop. What's the cue here? Could be something small, like you sit at your desk, I got your tea, mm -hmm. tells your brain, time to focus. Routines, the studying and the rewards, that feeling of, I did it. Or maybe a little treat. I like this. So you're making studying positive, not a chore. Exactly. And uh, it encourages you to customize. No more forcing yourself into a schedule that feels wrong. So, early birds, do your thing. Night owls, embrace it. Find what your brain likes best. Exactly. This is less history course, more unlock your brain masterclass. That's it. The skills here, thinking critically, remembering, you use those everywhere. We're not ditching history completely though, right? I no. still want to learn about the world. Oh, for sure. But even how they teach history here is designed to really engage your brain. Like week five, connecting those historical themes, the patterns. Yes. It's not just isolated facts, it's understanding the why seeing how everything's connected across time, different cultures. So not just that the Roman Empire fell, but what caused it, what happened because of it, all that. Exactly. History comes alive. You see cause and effect, how the past shapes us today. I can already tell this could change how I see history, maybe learning in general. Once you get your brain, the possibilities are huge. Totally. It's empowering, right? Yeah. And get this, they even cover stress management in week six. Wait, stress and history seemed a little out of place at first, but then thinking about it, stress really messes with focus, remembering things. It's actually brilliant. Right. Like they get that we need to be calm, focused to really learn. And history, well, it can be stressful. Exams, all that. Oh, tell me about it. Those college all-nighters cramming centuries of stuff in my brain. Not pretty, but this is like they're giving you tools to actually manage that stress. Totally. Not just coping, but like how to make learning feel good, you know? Okay, but then week seven, out of nowhere, creative thinking. Didn't see that one coming. Right. Not what you think of with history at first, but the more you think about it. It's like history is not just what happened, but understanding different sides, different possibilities. Exactly. That's the creative part. Asking those what if questions, using your imagination to really connect with the past. So not just reading about the Renaissance, but like imagine you were there, an artist in Florence. Yes. Walk in those streets. What do you want? What's hard for you? Bringing history to life that way. Makes it so much more real, relatable, like a time machine. Speaking of which, I'm curious about the readings, the assignments. They fit with all this brain stuff, right? Absolutely. The brain that changes itself. That's a classic for a reason. All about neuroplasticity with these amazing stories. Yeah, hearing about it in theory is one thing, but real people, real changes, that's powerful. And they've got articles on memory techniques, critical thinking, 
the psychology of learning, all that. So they're explaining the why, the science behind it all. Yes. And then the assignments themselves, it's about putting it all into practice. Like what, how do they bring these brain-based ideas into the actual work? Well, week two, they've got you writing about how neuroplasticity helps you understand timelines, causes of big events, taking the theory and using it on real history. Love that. You're not just listening. You're doing something, making the connections yourself. Then week three, after the memory technique stuff, you make your own mnemonic device for a historical event. Oh, that's fun. So trying to remember when the Magna Carta was signed, you'd make a rhyme or a picture. Right. Whatever works for you. And then they even have you think about how well it worked. So you're not just memorizing, you're learning how you learn best. Being self-aware is so important. What works for one person might not for another. Exactly. Yeah. And that self-reflection keeps going. The midterm uh. project, you're writing an essay or maybe a mind map showing how understanding neuroplasticity has like changed how you learn history. Whoa, that's meta. Hitting pause and going, okay, how's my brain different now? Right. Thinking about how you think, that's powerful. It is. And it sounds like they want you to think critically, creatively about history too. Like that week seven assignment, the counterfactual history essay. The what if game. Amazing what that does. What if this hadn't happened? Opens up a whole new way of looking at things. I bet those brainstorming sessions are wild. What if Rome never fell? What if no printing press? Endless possibilities. And from those what ifs, you get these insights into cause and effect, how everything's connected, what history even is. They're teaching you to think like a historian, not just memorize like a robot. Exactly. And then, of course, the final project in week nine. Bring it all together, your own brain-based history success plan. Okay, now we're talking. That's got to be the big takeaway. It is. All these brain-based strategies, and you're making a plan to keep succeeding in history and beyond. Not just a history exam, but like you're equipped to be a lifelong learner now. Exactly. That's pretty incredible, do you think? For sure. It's like you've got the keys now. You can unlock anything, learn anything, do anything. Okay, before we get too carried away, let's talk about those later weeks. How do they go from all this brain stuff to like loving learning for life? It's like they're saying, okay, you've leveled up your brain. Now use those powers for good. Right. And week eight is all about that. Going from school to like just loving to learn. How do they do that? What kind of stuff do they have you do to make you love learning? Well, there's this one assignment. You make a long-term history study plan, not just for a test, but like what really interests you? What do you want to explore more deeply? So cool. You become yeah. your own history teacher, making yeah. your own learning adventure. Yeah. You're seeking knowledge, not just waiting for someone to give it to you. And they even have you list resources like books, documentaries, whatever, to keep you going. That's awesome. Like, here's the keys to the library. Go wild. Exactly. Yeah. And then week nine, it all leads to that final project, your brain-based history success plan. Bringing it all home. Yeah, it's taking a step back, thinking about your learning style, the strategies, everything you've learned, and you put it all into this plan. Your brain's user manual. Totally. How to unlock your potential in history, but really in anything you want to learn. You know, when we started, I was all about the brain stuff, which is still so cool. Yeah. But now, seeing the whole picture, it is it. the passion. Whoever made this course cares about making people love history. For sure. And that rubs off on you. Makes you want to see history in a whole new way. Absolutely. This deep dive has me feeling inspired, ready to learn. So here's a question for you and for everyone listening. What's one thing you're curious about? History. Anything. Something you've been meaning to learn more about. Maybe this is your sign to go for it. Because like we've been saying, our brains are made for this. To be curious, to explore, to keep learning our whole lives.